Hello, Royal Fluency friends. Today's lesson will be a little different. I'm going to interview another English teacher so that you can learn more about how she teaches English. Also, you can use this interview for listening practice. We will be speaking fluent English and you can follow along with the subtitles at the bottom of the screen. Let's get started. Don't miss a lesson. Click the red subscribe button, then click the bell. Okay, hello, I'm Trisha from Row Fluency Now, and today I'm interviewing another online English teacher, and her name is Monica, and her teaching business is called Semper Satus. Is that right? That's, <laughs> Forgive me if I pronounced right. it wrong again. Which that's is right. Latin, and it means always time to start. Yeah. So, Monica, can you tell me or tell us? When did you start teaching English? Well, I started a long time ago. Well, at least it's a long time ago for me, uh, 20 years ago. Uh, yeah, I was still in, in high school and I had um, this, I, I really felt like English was a, a language that I wanted to learn. It was something that I really appreciated. I loved um, hearing people uh, speak in English. And then I started, uh, learning by myself and then right after i started learning like uh some years after that few years um i had some of my um peers my classmates asking me uh would you would you help me here i can i can pay you something if you help me teach me english and then uh right after that i had um this person, this friend, who also, uh, he, she used to speak English really well. She started teaching me, and she started teaching me how to teach as well. And it was really good. I had um, contact with um, books for teaching English as a second language. I started really learning what it was really to be an English teacher. Um, well, it was, that's how I, I, I started teaching. So then English isn't your first language then? No, my first language is Portuguese, um, Brazilian Portuguese. So you lived in Brazil at the time? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I lived in Brazil for, for 30, 34 years, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, I... I've been living here in the U.S. for three years, mm. but uh, I could learn a lot by myself. And after some time, I went to college. I I have a major in English and Portuguese, so I I ended up improving my knowledge of English as a as a language as well as literature uh, during college. But it's not really my, my first language. Yeah. So, so what like methodology or do you use to teach English or what, what's your philosophy or whatever, as far as teaching English? Well, um, I try to, to have this approach with my students, um, the same way I learned, I, I want them to have a more, um, natural experience. So what I try to do most of times is, making them listen a lot and speak a lot. Um, I've been using for a while um, this method uh, called shadowing. Mm -hmm. and, and also I have them um, <clears throat> using a lot of um, flashcards also because I think repetition, um, listening several times is really important as well as um, trying to speak as you know naturally so do, i most i'm mostly using those uh, do you use electronic flashcards or have them make uh, flashcards on paper well i've been using uh the app anki anki a n k i um it's kind of popular for uh, right among learners but i i like to do it because i can uh really uh, customize the, the flashcards. I speak uh, 
for every flashcard they can listen what it sounds like they will not be only reading um it's sort of that uh, approach like that duolingo has oh yeah lots of repetition and then uh, they have this practice that the flashcard comes up for them like according to how they are doing during the process of memorizing them like if they know a lot about it they're gonna tap there that they are fine they're okay with that uh sentence or that structure and then they won't be practicing that one that they know a lot uh, uh, that much but if they have some problem with something pronunciation or the structure itself building uh that sentence or anyway so if they have that problem with that particular thing mm -hmm. then they will be repeating it more um yeah okay so what kind of help do you think that portuguese speakers need the most when they're learning english i think portuguese speakers they mostly have this problem with uh, pronunciation and listening um most of them it's like i i feel that like uh the people who are uh portuguese speakers and are learning english they're divided into two groups the people who have problems listening mm -hmm. actually three groups the people who have problems listening recognizing sounds the people who have problems um pronouncing the words mm -hmm. uh properly and the people who have problems with both <laughs> they have this, both problems going on uh it's actually really um comprehensible that it happens because those people um they even though they have contact with the american culture mm -hmm. british culture they still they don't speak the, that language at all during you know their lives most of times it's not needed from them and, but nowadays i see that they need it oh really yeah they need it people in job. brazil need it yeah, yeah they need it not because uh like it's mostly for professional reasons um academic reasons they do need it and because it's not part of their culture to learn that language since they are little kids um mm -hmm. so most of people start learning and they have lots of challenges like pronunciation listening uh because they're not really used to to have it on an everyday basis like mm -hmm. you know but they now they are realizing that they do need it okay monica one more thing i want to ask what's the difference between teaching online and offline and which do you like better teaching offline is um different in a way that you have this proximity with the students and you end up getting to know them better and online uh it's because you're not really having this direct contact with your students mm -hmm. you end up not getting to know them that well uh but it's still like i think it's not completely different because you end up teaching the same way you end up uh thinking on what's the best option for your students to learn effectively so you have this part in which you are not uh having this um eye contact with your student Mm -hmm. but at the same time you are also the same way you would be offline preparing yourself to to um deliver uh good information share knowledge with your students i think the the purpose is the same mm -hmm. so well what i like the most i think nowadays i like online the most because first of all i can see i can not see them but i can um share this knowledge that i have mm -hmm. with lots of people that i wouldn't be able 
to to have this contact to share with them mm -hmm. if I were offline. Offline, I would probably be um, I would be ha having this people from a neighborhood or from a town, and online I can teach for much more people. Like I've been mm -hmm. teaching to Brazilian people, but mm -hmm. There are Brazilians who live in the United States, Brazilians who live all over the world. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be uh, somehow knowing that I am there and I will be teaching for them mm -hmm. wherever they are, whenever they are. So I think this possibility of reaching people um, mm -hmm. is, I think that's what makes me feel like online is better, you know? having this possibility of reaching this huge amount of people. Oh yeah. Yeah. Tons of people all over the world. Yeah. I think even online, I end up having more fun because, um, I, I end up having so many people that I have contact with mm -hmm. that I have all those, uh, confessions sometimes you know when i do when i do one-on-one -on -one lessons i have people doing confessions asking me for advice like um so many things and uh, i had people asking me ah, what should i do as a major in college you know this kind of thing um even though, even though it has it doesn't have a lot to do with uh with english mm -hmm. um but we were speaking in english and i was teaching so this person how to say majors minors and the person ended up saying uh, that she was in a really complicated situation she needed a, some help some advice and and also also other situations online teaching can give me like um uh, I wanted to show people, for example, how snow is like talking about teaching about weather and it was snowing and I am, I am outside walking, showing people snow and I end up falling. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I'm making the video there really happy showing snow. And I fall. Oh no. Did you get so, hurt? <laughs> no. Oh, well, that's good at least. <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, there are many situations. Or sometimes when I go for a stroll with, um, uh, you know, the baby stroller, and I am there trying to show people how nice the weather is, this kind of thing. That, uh, and then people walking on 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 the road across the road are looking at me, and they're like, <laughs> "What's this crazy woman doing?" She's talking to herself. No, I'm not. I'm online here trying to teach online. So people would think sometimes that we are crazy, you know, teachers. <laughs> yeah, I've still been too chicken to record anything outside for that reason, but a lot of a lot of people do, but I haven't done that yet. So there's no video on YouTube of you falling in the snow? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> No, because <laughs> I, I could put a link to that for everyone. If, uh, if, uh, if. Oh, uh, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. It, that would be awesome, but I don't have it. I, I felt so embarrassed that I just cut it off the video and mm. yeah, <laughs> but but yeah. So I have many situations like people looking at me. Is she crazy? You know, but. <laughs> It is what it is. We uh, need to give this experience, right, to our students. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet, but someday I may, may make a video outside like that. One more, one last question. What kind of online um, like lessons do you teach? Well, um, now I've been teaching on my, uh, I have a course, an online course, in which people access it and they're able to uh, go through several lessons. There are videos, there are flashcards, um, there are presentations, PDFs so they can download them. Um, and they can, after, after every five lessons, they gotta send me some material, like some 
some speaking material and also they they have to practice listening to and then they send me that and i give them feedback oh, that's that what i've been really cool. doing now yeah that's what i've been doing now and uh like um twice a month then i have this uh lesson online i mean totally live so wow. they're able to get there and talk to me and tell me everything that they need like make questions um tell me if they have they need something from me i'm there to help them i'm also helping them uh on what through whatsapp mm -hmm. the app that way so i can ask him how they're doing if they need anything so it's a process in which i'm i'm really having feedback from them and they are having feedback from me so it sounds like you your students that are taking your course your online course that you give them a lot of help and extra extra help and support then to get through the course yeah i think that's what makes the difference the experience yeah because nowadays everybody can go and get lots of free material online mm -hmm. so and it's not like a matter of getting a lot of information only i think to really effective learn you got to have some extra support from your yeah. teacher so that's what i'm trying to do on my course that's great that's really good Okay, well, we probably should finish this up in a little bit. So I will make sure that the link to your website for people who are interested in learning English from you is up in the card on, on this video, but also I put it in the description of the video and make sure that everybody can find it wherever, wherever I can put it up it so people can find it and everything. So um, I think that's about, is there anything else you want to say then? Anything no, else you want to add to say to everybody? <laughs> I just want to say hi for everybody and thank you so much, Trisha, for this opportunity to talk to you. And um, Trisha is a wonderful teacher as well. <laughs> you can see there are lots of videos her she, that her, she's been doing here and you got to check them all out because they're really, really good. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm still learning too, though, as far as making videos. teaching is you know english is one thing making videos is something different um, and i think most of us are still learning that, through that. <laughs> okay so i think that's all then so um i guess that's all goodbye to everybody watching and monica and we will we'll get you the links later so you can get in touch with each other all right all see you bye. everybody bye-bye thanks for watching if you want to learn english with monica a link to her YouTube channel is up here. Also, a link to her website will be in the description for this video. That's all for today. And remember, with hope, anything is possible. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn English with Monica, a link to her... Ah. That's all for today. With hope, anything is possible. I didn't say that right again.